at least in theory, later on in this presentation, you will show me the reality. But you also need to realize, because it's a completely different architecture, you are going to work with regions, and region is a uh, geographical uh, region, like uh, Linux, like Frankfurt. Within the region, you have a data center, at least three data centers, and also named availability domains. And also because security is much, much easier, because authentication, authorization, uh, so on, all kinds of authentication is much, much easier. Besides of that, you will have uh, separated tenant, because uh, all the customers are completely separated from each other, and also all your data is encrypted. As always, at least, like Oracle, is much more convenient because performance uh, SLA, availability SLA, and the performance uh, they are going to guarantee. But now the reality, because this is the theory, and now what we did. Next slide. What you need to realize when you are going to move to OCI is that you are going to build your own data center. So Oracle is going to say, you have cloud, cloud as a service, but I need to know a lot before I can go to start. First, the first thing you need to realize, administrator, I need to have a backup. What I do is I make one email address with the central administrator, like um, admin at bricks.com. The reason? When there is something happening with my administrator, I always have a backup. But I also have to realize when I'm going to configure the cloud, it's going to consume credits. So I can have a surprise that I have much, much more and higher costs than I expected in advance. What I do is I define soft limit, a soft limit like uh, a threshold when I'm going to reach, for example, 10 euro, I like to receive a warning from my administrator. I also can do a hard limit when I'm going to reach my 10 euro, I want to stop completely my service and to stop my consumption. That is one thing I need to know. I also um, need to think about my architecture in advance. What I mean is I'm going to think about a compartment that's defining my resource within the Oracle Cloud. And um, I'm going to separate my duties, for example, a network administrator is going to get his own compartment and non-network administrators. Or my development environment, I'm going to separate from my production environment or my customers. So you need to think, because when you make a mistake here, and you are going to run on the Oracle Cloud, and you're going to realize you make a mistake, then you need to do many steps back. So yeah, I want to tell you this, because you have to realize. And also, when you want to connect your own network to the Oracle Cloud, that means um, I'm going to define my third world cloud network, I'm going to go to make the connection with my IP addresses and so on. So before you start, take a piece of paper, going to draw how you like to have it before you're going to sit behind the, the button and to press and to configure. About the architecture of the system, about your architecture of the system, because this is the real story on, on our use case. Yes. Um, okay, where do you start when you want to use OCI Cloud? That was uh, uh, was the issue. I'm, uh, as an Oracle DBA, I'm not a network man, I'm not a storage man, I'm not a security man, but I want to uh, I want to know everything. You should know a lot of those things before you start. There's a lot of documentation uh, on the internet. Oracle provides a lot of documentation. You should really use uh, 
these documentation, read them, and prepare. Um, you can have a question uh, as a service, to define service, and because you have to know a lot of things about all those components. Okay, that, that was for us a little bit disappointing to have to know so much information to, uh, to start. Where do you start? Well, Oracle uh, has a phrase in its documentation, before you create a database cloud service in the Oracle cloud infrastructure, you must create certain network storage and security resources in the Oracle cloud infrastructure. So that's a, the infrastructure is really your base, and it's a one-time operation, you just uh, uh, configure it once, and after that, well, it, it stayed all day, always the same. For us, it, it did. We we are implemented it in last December, and well, we are only um, working now with the database cloud service and the infrastructure. Well, it's one time configuring, and that's it. So, but it's important as a base. So you really should think about it. Well, there's a lot of uh, considerations, a lot of choices to make during uh, the configuration. Uh, database versions, types, um, virtual or bare metal, uh, your storage, whether you want your backup, do you want automatic backup or not, and do you want a single instance, or, or do you use data guard? Um, you have to think about all those options. And uh, in bold, here you can see uh, what choices we made. That was our situation, but it all depends on the customer, of course. Well, uh, Elon talked about uh, compartments. Compartments you can see as a kind of server node where your database is running on. So we have three compartments, uh, two production and one non-production. The production and the non-production, the left and the right one, those are almost the same, uh, except the OCPU. The production is running on two OCPU and the uh, non-production on one. The other production one is a standard edition version with uh, just one single pluggable database. It's, it's multi-tenant, but it's, you, can, you can have max one, uh, one pluggable database in it. And the other one, the, on the production and the non-production, there are, well, you can scale up to, on one instance, to thousands and thousands of pluggable databases in one instance. So for us, it was the, the solution to have uh, this uh, architecture. So the real motivation is what I said. Um, you need to think about a lot of stuff in advance when you make a mistake in thinking before that I'm sure <laughs> you need to think afterwards. Um, next slide. There's a lot of documentation and I know I say to all of you, read the documentation in advance before you're going to start to configure. I know there's a difference a man and a woman. The woman is always going to read documentation. A man is going to try and it doesn't, then it doesn't work. He's going to ask his wife. But it doesn't work. Please listen one time to me. Read the documentation. You will have advantage of that. The next what you need to take into consideration is to think about the database. Do you like to have multi-tenancy? Yes or no? Multi-tenancy is only licensed in the Enterprise Edition High Performers, or do you only need one instance for uh, winning? So think about the database. What is the purpose of your database? What do you need to install? And then uh, do you need active data card? Do you, do you need in-memory? Then you need to have the latest, uh, the Enterprise Extreme Performers, but in the most of the cases, I think <coughs> the tenant is a very good choice, but of course, depends on you, your customer situation. Backup in the cloud, um, yeah, you should expect cloud, 
cloud business service, everything is uh, organized for you uh, automatically? Yes and no. When you're going to uh, make use of database as a service, yes, it's configured. But going to think about the retention period, because normally it's 30 days. A lot of times um, it's going to run out of space when you have a very big database. Then I think going to think maybe 40 days is good enough. And maybe a story about our situation. In our situation, we were running out of space. Because we were running out of space, the database was going down. Because the database was going down, also our web server, Orts was going down. And my customer could not reach <coughs> their database anymore. You can avoid that. Later on in the presentation, we will explain what we did. But that's also something you need to realize. What I always saw, it's cloud, I'm going to configure, and everything is done for me out of the box. And that's not true. You really need to know, oh, he's going to make a bucket that makes, uh, that it has this consequence, and when it's going to work out of space, it's still stopping. And I get somewhere a message, and then you really need to know. These are the considerations we made uh, looking at the, the source environment where we came from. So the environment which we have to migrate to the OCI cloud. And there are different yeah, aspects you have to look at. Uh, it's not typical cloud issues. I think uh, you have to look at it with every migration, but also with the cloud. So do I come from on-premises or do I come from classic cloud? What character set do I use? Uh, well, Indian format, it's database stuff, but okay. multi tenant or not, and uh, database version. Choices, choices, and choices. Wh what do you use? Uh, uh, Is there somebody in, in this audience who already made the decision to migrate straight to OCI? Do you recognize no. some frustration? Or I mean, the, you said that <coughs> choosing for a multi tenant in the purpose of the database, we had a cost aspect. <coughs> so we calculated from how many databases do we have to do the deployment in OCI versus one multi tenant license in the Oracle Cloud. What's the difference? So we chose not to use the multi tenant database. That can be a consideration indeed. Thank you. So you want to transfer your data from the source environments to your OCI cloud, and well, there's a lot of things you can choose of. And we choose the uh, conventional one, the, uh, the data pub, the Oracle uh, with export and uh, import. Okay. Um, how do you connect to your OCI cloud environment? There are few, three ways. To, uh, by VCN or VPN or just the internet gateway. The last one was for us sufficient enough. Now this is, for my presentation, a very important sheet because this is uh, yeah, what happened. Uh, on the left side, uh, that's the situation we came from. It's um, multiple Oracle Cloud Classic environments uh, and also um, you don't see it on the picture, but it's also non, some non-production X8 databases running on 11. And um, in our situation, we have for every customer, we had a separate database on a separate server. That was our uh, situation before. So what we really did during the migration was a, a consolidation of all our separate customer databases into one multi-tenant database. So every customer has his own, in, in a new situation, his own container database. And uh, we came from multiple nodes to migrate to one node with two OCP. So there's one database running with about 10 pluggable databases at the moment. And uh, we do not have any serious performance issue at the moment. We had in the beginning, because everything comes together. So, uh, reason of the performance, that's also what I always say to my customer, and in this case it was true. 
again, is when you have a performance issue, most of the cases look to your query. When you have a very bad query uh, in the background, of course, when you are going to move to the OCI, even when OCI is performing fairly well, uh, it can give performance problems. So always have that in back. Uh, and uh, in Apex, I have seen many, many performance problems, but not in Apex, because I had you have always the problem. The DBA doesn't know about the database. A developer uh, do doesn't know about the database, and then the DBA only knows about the database, but doesn't know about the query behind. So that's the wrong combination. Then you think, oh, cloud is going to make the solution for me, but it's going to move to another system, of course, um, that's always performing very well, but when the query is bad, it will still perform very well. Well, we noticed uh, in the new uh, OCI cloud that the storage and the networking <coughs> is, is a bit, uh, it's performing good. So, um, as you can see, we only upgraded our database version from 12.1 <coughs> to 12.2. But that's not really a misleading <coughs> one. We did not upgrade it our ODS and Apex version, still on 5.04. It's a bit old version, but well, we want to min minimize the risk with having uh, more conversions at one time. We do not want that. So that's for our later uh, later on. Um, we changed a little bit on our ODS configuration from uh, standalone. Now running in a Tomcat application. Okay. Okay. Let's zoom in. Uh, what we just uh, did on the on the server itself. So during the migration. First we have to install and configure ODS and Tomcat uh, with, uh, with Nginx, uh, the reflex proxy. But that is a one-time action. You just install that in the database. Um, in the terminal, not in the database, in the, in the, on the server. Um, and looking at Apex, there's an interesting choice to make because uh, you could choose to have one Apex installation for the whole database instance. Well, every Pluggable database uses that single Apex installation. Or you can install Apex in every Pluggable database. We choose for the last one to have more control per uh, container. Uh, so our capacity application uses and different customers and different Pluggable databases. And they have different image files and CSS and JavaScript files. And so we want to separate them. Uh, we created also a dummy, uh, one time, a dummy uh, pluggable database called here X. And we still installed that uh, Apex uh, in it. So when a customer migrates, what do we do? Um, we create a new pluggable database from clone from the database X. This is really just one statement. Two, because you have to open it also. Okay. Um, and afterwards, you configure ODS and uh, the Enterprise Ready Console for the playable database. It's a few statements. And after that, we do a export import of the metadata only from the customer. And that's a preparation. You can do that a week before your really migration day. Um, on the moment of the migration itself, the customer goes offline. And we are doing an export import of the data pump with data pump of the data only. Install the latest, latest version of our uh, Compesti application on that pluggable database. And the last thing you have to do is you change your DNS record because you want to go to the uh, IP address of the uh, OCI server. And with this scenario, uh, our customers were only one and a half hour 
uh, out of business. After that, they were online and running again. Our lessons learned after our migration. Um, one of the things you need to realize is you're going to miss the ZDS monitor tool. Okay, that's quite easy to overcome. You have an other enterprise manager instead for an SKL developer. So that was not a big issue. It's documented and even well documented. So that's, that's something new. This is. Uh, a bit of frustration. Um, we <laughs> missed um, our installation, and after the installation, I was called by Chris Elon. I cannot talk with other enterprise manager. I was looking. I really don't understand what is wrong. It works for me, but that's no message for him. So, um, what we did, try another browser, and it was working. That's frustrating. Some browsers are working fine, and you expect Chrome, Firefox, um, Safari works everything well. That's not true. In our case, Firefox did it. Firefox did the trick. So I was sleeping again, but one of our frustrations. A bit embarrassing. It's like, uh, did you have to turn it on and off again? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we had made a search request at Oracle support and uh, escalating it to level three, two, one. <laughs> Eventually, uh, came to my own. Once uh, <coughs> support uh, wanted to, did yeah. you try uh, another browser? Sometimes, <laughs> sorry, life is so easy. But you need to realize a manual installation. Um, the good news is uh, you can also automate it a little bit. Later in the presentation, I will explain how, because you can make uh, everything that is uh, available on the uh, careful user interface is available in REST API or Terraform script. Later on in the presentation, we will explain more because it's documented by Oracle in the white paper. But again, you expect cloud, you expect service, you expect everything is easy. And it is like uh, my life is less easy than before. And that was frustrating us a bit. Also, that's what Chris told. Uh, you are going to configure cloud. You need to know uh, more about network. And uh, you know a lot about uh, Apex, a lot about uh, Query, but not about configuring networks. What do you need to do? Where can I find the information? Where can I find the documentation? That you're going to try. It's not going to listen, and, and so on. But you know it's not. Difficult, but you have to know. This is something one day, at least. This, the command, mm -hmm. you can forget it because it's documented, but when you do not know, it can be a lot of frustration. Uh, this is command, it's not. Okay. Is something you need to explain? Yes, we, uh, in our application, Apex, we. we we generate PDF and Word and Excel files from it, and we use Doxy, but we use uh, a little bit old version, 12.1, so we, when we go to 12.2, it actually didn't work uh, for PDF, so we had to upgrade uh, to another Doxy level. But that was, you know, that when you go to uh, uh, migrate, you have some, well, tools maybe in your Apex uh, things, uh, you have to uh, look at them. They uh, need an upgrade. This is what I said. Um, everything that's available within the capable user interface is available on the command line. But you need to know how, why. You have different methods to make your scripts. And then you need uh, to fill in a lot. And then you think it has to be automated. That's true, but the good news is um, in March, I thought the 15th of March, uh, the development team for Oracle created a new white paper. It's named Oracle Cloud Infrastructure with Application Express and Ports, and how to configure and how to use Terraform. So use this, and it makes your life a bit easier. And I say a bit. 
fetching in the cloud, that's also uh, everything is going automatically, Oracle is going to provide you the pets, then you are going to make a decision when are you going to install, because it's still your choice, but then sometimes it's a bit crossing your fingers if everything is going well. Um, again, you think everything is going automatically, but also here we had a problem why it applying a patch and uh, our circuit was out of order. I remember quite well the video yeah. on the phone. It was not too long, but still it was. This is one of our frustrations. Um, we made a decision. Um, when you have only one or two CPUs, you are not going to think about bare metal because it's much, much higher in cost. So we made the decision to move to a third home machine. And to be fair, it's in all the documentation. It's in small letters. We wanted to move to a higher amount of CPUs to scale up. In a classic cloud, it was only pressing one button. And I was not able to scale up. So it was a little bit panic. We want to scale up. What do we need to do? So I was thinking, okay, we have the backup, we also can restore the backup, so what we are going to do, we are going to make a new database, and then we are going to restore the backup in a new database, and then we can scale up. It's a little bit strange to do it in that way. I do not know another workaround. I need to wait for Oracle, because I was so frustrated that I called uh, Oracle Development in my evening, and told about my frustration uh, by, by the customer, and they promised me to change their life, and it is on the roadmap, and I think, but yeah, safe hardware, I have no safe hardware anymore, but in April or May, we have the possibility to scale it. But realize that it is not available. When you have four CPUs or more, then it's worth to calculate if bare metal is an interesting choice. But that's calculated. Okay. Some good news? Let's put some positivity <laughs> in the whole story. <laughs> we are, yes, um, there are some advantages for us in our situation. It's, it's a steady environment. 